Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into the world of Pokemon. This is Pokemon The Lost Chronicles, an anthology type series where each chapter kind of takes place with a different... Pokemon trainer or Pokemon character with different Pokemon teams, you'll see different Pokemon storylines, etc, etc. This is a character called Baz, he's a firefighter, and I really hope you enjoy this story, it's one that I paid a lot of attention to, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Pokemon The Lost Chronicles Tales of Baz Returning to the Flame Baz sat there in the fire station. The captain of the 118 division sat across from him, reading his physical and psychiatric evaluation report. Well, Baz, it's been about ten months since the accident. You sure you are ready? The captain asked him. Yes, sir, I am. I do not see the point in wallowing in my own pity. I should get back out there and help out the best way I can, Baz replied. I would be honoured to have some of your courage and level-headedness on the team. But I cannot allow someone who has not had a lot of time to get his head on straight, the captain told him. Baz shifted in his chair uncomfortably and sighed a sigh of uncomfortable effort. Sorry, Baz. Give it a couple more months. Then you can come back, okay? The captain said. Baz nodded his head and stood up. He shook the captain's hand, then he left the office. He walked through the fire station. Some of his old work colleagues waved or nodded their heads at him. He then walked out in a sense of dread hanging over him. He strolled down the street and wandered around. He finally found a bench and he sat down. And he sat and looked over to the ocean. He pulled out his Pokeball, the only Pokemon he ever had, and threw the Pokeball up into the air. And it opened and a burst of light hit the ground and a Blastoise appeared. Blast! His Blastoise yelled out. Baz caught the now empty Pokeball and Blastoise walked over to him and looked at him with hopeful eyes. Nah, sorry buddy, we didn't get back in, Baz said sadly. Blastoise sat down and huffed. Yeah, I know. I was kind of hoping too, pal. Baz muttered. Someone came running up to him, and Baz could tell it was a rookie trainer. Wow, a Blastoise! The trainer called out. Oh, yeah, he's pretty great. Baz replied, giving the young trainer a weak smile. <laughs> Want a battle? The rookie trainer asked, his voice filled with pure delight. Before Baz could decline, Blastoise stood up and his cannons extended. It stood proud and tall. Baz looked at his Pokemon partner and shook his head. He knew Blastoise was trying to get his mind off the recent denial. Baz stood up, took several paces away, then spun around on his heel and stood there. Ready when you are, kid, Baz said. Oh yeah, let's go, the trainer cheered. Then he ran down the grass, creating some distance. He pulled out a Pokeball and threw it into the air and a brass of light exploded and a Noctile appeared. Name is Sam, by the way. What about you? The trainer asked. My friends call me Baz. Baz told him. Okay, Baz, let's do this 1v1, yeah? Sam asked. Yeah, sounds good. Baz nodded. Blastoise waddled over and stood in front of Baz. It looked over its shoulder and nodded at his trainer with a confident grin. I'll start this off. Knocked Owl, you steel wing! Sam called out. Knocked Owl flew at Blastoise. Its wings started glowing and it used a steel-like cased wing and slashed Blastoise with it. Blastoise stood there like a statue, not phased by Knocked Owl's attack. Blastoise! Hydro pump, Baz ordered. Blastoise leaned forward and a massive stream of water exploded from each one of its cannons on its back. Both jets of, sh of water hit Knockdown, sending it flying back as it crashed into the ground. Knockdown grunted and then took flight once again. Use gust, Sam called out. Knockdown flapped his wings and a strong wind kicked up. Blastoise grunted as the wind pushed it back ever so slowly. Try using ice beam. Baz barked. Blastoise shot uh, two beams of chilling power from its cannons. The ice beams hit Knockdown head on, freezing Knockdown. Knockdown fell to the ground in a body completely encased in ice. Shell slam, let's go, Baz called out. Blastoise quickly tucked its arms, legs, cannons and head into its shell and threw itself forward, spinning at rapid speeds. The rotating shell slammed into the ice encased bird Pokemon. The ice shattered as Knockdown was thrown across the field, slamming into the ground hard. The Knockdown stood up and then passed out and dropped to the ground. Whoa, that was incredible, Sam muttered in disbelief. He pulled out his Pokeball and returned his Knockdown. You did good, Knockdown. Rest up, okay? Sam muttered to his Pokeball. Baz walked over to Sam. Nice job, kid, Baz said. What do you mean? Not that I just got rammed. I failed so hard, Sam moaned. Hey, you are standing proud, 
Not Daryl and you are in sync. Having Pokemon is like having a best friend. Right, Blastoise? Baz said. Blast. Blastoise. Blastoise grunted here with a nod of the head. Thanks. And thanks for the battle. Sam replied with a small grin. Hey, whenever you come through here again on your travels, come find me, okay? Me and Blastoise would love to see how you get on with your journey as a Pokemon trainer. Baz told him. Thanks, Baz. Sam said. They said their goodbyes and Sam left in a hurry. To carry on his Pokemon trainer journey. Baz returned Blastoise to his Pokeball and then he headed to a bar. The bad news he received still lingering in the back of his mind. Ten months ago. A chemical facility had caught a blaze. Fire erupted. The building was falling apart. The building housed a lot of gardening and plant handling equipment. And there was a lot of workers and grass type Pokemon trapped inside. Two fire trucks came to a halt. Their sirens ringing out. Signalling their urgency to aid those in need. Baz, his captain and his crew all jumped out of the fire truck. Taking the proceedings needed to aid where they could. They all caught out their Pokemon and several water type, ground type and flying type Pokemon appeared. The captain ordered everyone on what to do. One of the firefighters with their Machoke broke open the door and the firefighters ran in and started housing the fires down with a hose. Their water type Pokemon aided them with their water guns and hydro pump attacks to help put out the roaring flames. Baz was ordered to check the offices, so he ran further into the facility with the aid of his Wartortle. Wartortle jumped up with its shell and it barged into the office. Flames erupted from the room, but were contracted by Wartortle's water gun attack. Baz quickly ran through the office and noticed that no one was in there. He did a quick check and sweep of the room and made sure that there wasn't anyone hiding. He then ran out of the room quickly. Wartortle followed after him. They ran up the staircase and onto the second level. They ran overhead of the other firefighters and Baz could see the whole ground level, fire being extinguished and people and Pokemon being saved. Baz then found another office. He ran towards the door when suddenly a boiler in the corner exploded, causing more flames to erupt and a massive shockwave, which knocked over Baz and Wartortle. As Baz climbed to his feet, he noticed the explosion had caused the metallic walkway to become unhinged, making the whole thing rock back and forth. Baz held onto the railing and he looked down and saw the flames had blanketed the ground. The firefighters had been pushing back to the front entrance of the facility. Baz could feel the heat licking his boots. He kept moving ever so slowly. Then he heard a young voice. Help me, please, the voice called out. I'm coming. Don't move, Baz ordered. As Baz continued his quest to walk across the walkway, Wartortle kept blasting the roaring flames beneath them with his water gun. He reached the door and opened it. He stepped in and turned around to see the walkway crumble. It fell apart and fell into the roaring flames down below, crashing on the ground. Wartortle walked up to Baz with a worried expression. It's okay, we'll figure something out, Baz told his Pokemon. Wartortle nodded and then they advanced into the room and found a small girl and her froakie tucked under the table. Hi there, the girl muttered sweetly. Hey there, young one. I'm a firefighter. Got a name? Baz asked. They call me Gracie, the girl replied. All right, Gracie. My name is Baz, and this is my war turtle. I see you have a froakie. Baz smiled. Yeah, Gracie nodded. Okay, let's all sit together and get out of here, Baz told her. He offered his hand, and Gracie took it, and he pulled her up to her feet. Why are you here, Gracie? Baz asked. It's bring your daughter to work day, but I lost my dad, Gracie explained. Baz leaned out the window and he had the view of the entire ground level. In the far off distance, he could see his teammates working hard, trying to put out the flames. Hey! Baz called out, but no one could hear him. He leaned back into the room and then checked on Gracie, and she was perfectly fine stood next to him. He leaned out the window once again and saw a ladder to the left. It led to the top of the roof of the office. Baz turned to Gracie once again. We're going to have to climb up, okay? We need to get noticed and get everyone to look up at us. So take short, deep breaths and don't look down. Be quick and safe, okay? And I promise we'll get you to your dad, Baz ordered. Gracie nodded and Baz watched as Gracie climbed out of the window and shimmied across the edge of the, uh, to the ladder. Baz picked up Froki and placed him out of the window as well. The Froki shimmered across the way following the young girl. Baz then climbed out the window and shimmied across, joining Gracie and Froakie, and Wartortle jumped 
up onto the window ledge and started using his water gun against the slowly ever growing flames. Baz knew Wartortle would be okay there for a moment, so he held onto the ladder as Gracie started climbing. Froakie followed, then Baz started climbing, and Gracie got to the top of the ladder. Then she carefully bent down and grabbed Froakie. She lifted the small blue frog Pokemon up and placed him on the roof of the office room. Then, before she could make an advancement, the ladder broke. It leant away from the wall. Gracie screamed as she was now dangling from the ladder and dangling above the flames. Baz moved quickly, started swinging across the bars like he was a boy playing in a playground on the monkey bars. He reached Gracie, then the bottom section of the ladder finally broke. Gracie and Baz, along with the ladder, fell into the roaring flames. Wartall, Tall and Froki both calling out in panic for their human partners. Baz woke up feeling sore. Luckily for him, all of his injuries were mostly bruises. He found his Wartortle sat next to him. Hey there, buddy. Baz grunted. Wah, wah, Tuttle War Tuttle chirped gleefully, happy to see his trainer awake. Yeah, gl glad to see you too, man, Baz said. Baz looked around to see he was in a hospital room. His captain walked in and approached him. Glad to see you awake, Baz, his captain told him. Thank you, sir. Glad I'm okay, Baz muttered, sitting up straight as he could. Baz... <sighs> this is going to be hard to say, but the girl you're trying to save, I'm afraid she did not make it. The captain sighed. Gracie. Crap! Baz barked. It's not your fault, son. Think... Think of it this way. Things like this happen. And I know her parents want to thank you for trying to save their daughter. The captain told her. Baz nodded at his captain. The captain then turned around and started to walk away. But Baz remembered Gracie's Pokemon partner. Hey, captain. Did anyone find Gracie's Froakie? Baz asked. Um, no. We didn't find any Froakie. The captain stated. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Listening to this filth! You should be listening to the Zero to Hero podcast right this instant. It will give you the brain numbing, blood pumping thrill that drinking. 12 espressos, 12 shots of vodka, and looking at a unicorn for the first time would give you. I swear to God, Billy and Jim pour their blood, their sweat, their tears, and the gold that they found in the Garden of Eden into their podcast. And you sit here, you're not listening to it, are you insane? Go over to the Zero to Hero podcast now and listen to it. Damn it, I have to do everything around here. Duh. Present day. The clock struck 11pm. The night sky was clear but empty. No stars wanted to dance around the moon, leaving the moon to hang there solemnly. Baz was walking home, and he took the long route. The breeze was nice and chilled, and he enjoyed the quiet. The emptiness was rather relaxing. Baz stood before the ocean. The beach was a set of steps away, and Baz closed his eyes. An image of Gracie filled his mind, and his heart started to ache. He felt guilty that he failed to save her. He could smell the scent of burning wood, thick black smoke and gasoline. The sound of fire engines filled his ears. Baz's eyes snapped open. He realised that that was not in his mind. Baz turned around to see a thick cloud of pure black smoke rising higher into the air. Baz automatically bolted towards the source. After a few minutes, Baz arrived at the Pokemon Centre. The entire building was up in flames, and he saw only two fire engines and a handful of firefighters. Baz took a deep breath in. I have to help, Baz growled. Suddenly, the Pokeball in his pocket burst open and Blastoise appeared next to him. Blastoise, what, what are you doing? Baz asked, confused. Blastoise! Blastoise roared straight at the burning building before them. Oh, you want to help too? Baz stated. Blastoise nodded at his trainer. All right, come on, Baz said. Before Baz and Blastoise could make a charge, the roof inside of the building collapsed right in front of the entrance, blocking the door from the inside. The captain was talking to Nurse Joy. Baz looked at Blastoise, then gestured it to follow him. They ran around the back of the building. Baz looked into the small window and could see a bunch of weakened and medically cared for Pokemon, all trapped in one room. Baz tried the back door, but he burned his hand on the heated handle. Blastoise, shell slam! 
Baz barked under his breath. Blastoise tucked his self into its shell and spun into the door, the entire door breaking off its hinges and crashing on the floor of the treatment room. Baz bolted in. Smoke filled the room. The room was hot, which made it hard to breathe. Baz covered his mouth and nose with the sleeve of his jacket. Start putting out these flames, okay? Baz told Blastoise. Blastoise nodded and walked over to the roaring flames that tried to climb into the room. Using its cannons, it started fighting the flames of its hydro pump. Baz ran over to some of the cages and opened them, and he ran up to the beds and pulled the medical drips out of the Pokemon. He then ran to the door and started directing the weakened Pokemon out of the room. Then suddenly he could hear desperate cries from a Pokemon echoing from a distance. It's a chancy, I think. Baz stated. Baz then watched as the last three Pokemon leaving the burning building. He then ran deeper into the building. He hopped through a broken window and landed in the corridor. He then turned to see Blastoise who struggled to fit through. Stay here pal and tackle these flames. I'll be right back. Baz told his Blastoise. Blastoise gave him a stern look. I promise I'm coming back. Baz nodded. Blastoise nodded back at him and then Baz ran down the corridor and into another room. The flames were more intense. He could barely see past the thick black smoke cloud that had filled the room. Then he saw Chansey in the corner surrounded by flames which lit the Pokemon. Hang on Chansey I'm coming! Baz called out. Chansey let out a terrified cry of help. Baz carefully stepped into the flames dodging the wisps of fire. His chest became tight and he found it hard to breathe. Even though he had his mouth covered by his arm again it did not do the best job. Baz looked up at a large creaking sound erupted from above. He saw parts of the ceiling moving f moving towards him, falling down. Baz looked around and the fire had encased him. He was now trapped. Suddenly a large, long-legged blue frog Pokemon appeared and slammed its foot into a large piece of roof tile, kicking it away. Then it landed beside Chansey. It opened its mouth and shot a stream of water at the fire, which diminished enough of the flames, allowing Baz to join them. You're, you're Frogadier! Baz stated. Frogadier nodded. Thanks for the assist. Now let's get this Chansey out of here. Baz asked. Then he approached Chansey. Are you okay? He asked the Pokemon. Chansey nodded and then sighed with worry. It's okay. Nurse Joy's outside. I got all the other Pokemon out as well. Outside the back. Come on. Is there anyone else in here? Baz asked. Chansey! Chansey! Chansey said, shaking her head. Okay, come on. We better get out of here. I know the safest way out. Baz told Chansey and Frogadier. Baz led the Chansey and Frogadier through the fire. As Frogadier would spray the flames with water gun, they got to the corridor, all three of them running down. Once again, Baz hopped through the broken window, joining Blastoise. Hey buddy, told you I'll be back. Baz said, Blast! Blastoise called out. The flames kicked up even more. We need to get out of here, Baz told them. He helped Frogadier lift Chansey over. With a quick jump, Frogadier landed next to Baz, and then he led all three Pokemon out of the Pokemon Center. They stood a few feet away, the building still being swallowed by fire. There you are, a voice called out. Baz and all the Pokemon turned to see Nurse Joy and the fire captain walking up to them. Oh, Chansey, you're okay, Nurse Joy cried out as she dropped her knees and hugged her Pokemon. Baz, what are you doing here? The captain barked. Saving all these Pokemon, Baz barked back. You are signed off duty till further notice, the captain roared. Yeah, and I didn't see anyone else try using the back door. Instead, I bet you tried to get through the damage first. Am I right? Baz sneered. You... Uh, you may have a point, the captain muttered. Baz then walked away with his Blastoise following. Baz, the captain called from behind him. Baz turned around. I shall see you bright and early Monday morning, the captain told him. Baz grinned and nodded at his captain. He then turned around and walked away, allowing the firefighters to do the job. He walked for a while, Blastoise trotting next to him, when suddenly there was a blur and in front of him landed the Frogadier. Hey, you're a Frogadier from the Pokemon Center, Baz said. Frogadier nodded, then he walked up to Baz and placed his finger on Baz's chest. What's this about? Baz asked. He looked at Frogadier, then suddenly an image came into his mind. The Froakie from ten months ago prior. Gracie's Froakie. He looked at the Frogadier, and it nodded at him. You're Gracie's Pokemon, Baz gasped. Frogadier nodded again. I'm so sorry I could not save her, Baz cried out, tears filling his eyes. He dropped to his knees. Will you forgive me? Baz asked. Frogadier bent down, pulled Baz to his feet. He wiped away his tears, and then it presented a Pokeball to him. Huh? You want to be part of my team? You want me to catch you? Baz asked shot. Frogadier. The Pokemon called out in cheer. Baz turned to Blastoise. What'd you say, bud? Want a partner? Baz asked his Blastoise. 
Blastoise! Blastoise said with a grin. Okay then, Baz nodded. He took the Pokeball from Frogadier, held it out, and Frogadier pushed the button with the tip of its finger. And the ball opened, and in a surge of light, Frogadier was sucked into the Pokeball. The ball closed, and it shook three times. The button flashing red, then it flashed white, confirming the capture. Baz let out a chuckle, then threw the Pokeball into the air, and in a burst of light, Frogadier reappeared, landing next to Blastoise. Alright guys, we start work on Monday, and we gotta make sure that we are sharp and ready to help those in need, Baz told the two water-type Pokemon. Both Pokemon cheered. I promise I won't fail again. We will continue to save those in need. In the name of Gracie, Baz said. Frogadier nodded, a peaceful look in its eyes. Baz finally let go of the guilt, knowing that Frogadier, once that hard-working, tired, scared little Froakie, was still proving that losing Gracie was not the end of the world, and it was the push to make sure no one else was lost. It wanted to make Gracie proud, so Baz intended on giving Froakie that chance. Now let's get some food and rest. Monday, we're gonna start saving the world again, so we better be in tip-top shape, Baz told his Pokemon. Baz, Blastoise, and their new teammate Froakie headed into town, ready to start work as a firefighter, once again protecting those in need.